yesterday while I was trying to type up the number for the Boomerang channel on my television set, I accidentally stumbled across a generic Mestizo channel, and this channel had Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre, which I recognize as one of the most popular Mexican promotions and one of the oldest remaining wrestling promotions. I decided to give it a shot because why not? When I think about wrestling, I usually think about more American, Canadian, and Japanese base wrestling than Mexican or Puerto Rican wrestling. So, give it a shot. It'd be exotic, and it can't be as bad as anything we have to deal with now on TNA or the WWE. Well, to give you starters on how my experience was, it was two hours of non-stop match after match after match. And these weren't singles matches. I've yet to see a single match in a whole two-hour production. It was just non-stop six-man tag team tornado matches. It was very fast-paced, actually. Which is something I heard prior to watching this program by accident. But I was always told that the tag team matches would be at a faster pace. And that Mexico basically thrives on these kinds of this kind of competition. As opposed to singles competition. And... It wasn't what I expected. One of the things I had to account for was lowering the volume a lot to deal with the constant air horn in the background. One disadvantage of wrestling that isn't western or nor eastern loudness. Just this constant air horn blaring that was annoying and distracting really. The pace was something that I wasn't really ready for. It kind of rivals Attitude Era pace, but also the way people wrestle here. It's kind of different. They sort of, oh, it's a lot of lighter guys. So they kind of wrestle like they're on the moon or something. Very glidey and weightless. A lot of high flyers aren't like this. Even if they're small, they still kind of move like they're just heavier. These guys kind of operate like they're on a different set of gravity. In terms of physics, what I just say makes sense. I don't know. This was way different in that sense. I also knew it was a Mestizo wrestling program because I saw the ring and there was the Corona symbol. I noticed that for a lot of CMLL events. There's a heavy Mestizo crowd, not a lot of Aspies, a lot of chicks in their underwear and some tight ass t shirt. Alicia are holding up signs regularly. I don't know what they're called, but they're not wrestlers, just people holding up signs. You know, like an official position. I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. I think back to like racing, where in racing video games like Fast and Furious, there's that girl that holds up the sign. And then, when you guys go, she drops it. That's kind of what I think about, or of. I know I knew the word 
sometime before, but because I've rarely seen it in action, I didn't think about it. And I've lost it. You don't use it, you lose it. <sighs> what else? It's hard to, like, pick who you want to win when you don't know half the guys. I mean, they all look the same to me. And top it all off. Half of them have masks. There was a formal design to them. So that kind of took away from the experience, my lack of experience and prior knowledge. But all in all, it was a refreshing break. It was only a two hour program. It felt like a five hour program because the commercials on that channel were kind of on a loop, didn't understand the language, and just non-stop matchups and really the same kind of fast-paced stuff so it got repetitive after a while I think they give it every Saturday from 3 to 5 and from what I've heard from the channel I saw it you could see it in other channels for one hour but here I got to see it for two hours, although they do showcase reruns and the regular episodes. That's a downside. At the same time, it's not often that I see stuff like this, so it's worth seeing. Hmm. Now would I watch something like that again? That's an interesting question that I'm assuming you asked, but if you didn't, then who cares? I'm going to answer it anyway. Every now and then, I'm not going to lose sleep over it or regret it if I don't catch up on it. But anything that's different is different. Me, I like my wrestling kind of high culture in a way. I can't believe I'm calling the WWE high culture because it's not, but you kind of get what I'm saying. Like, there's a Western vibe to it, or an Eastern vibe to it, not that Mestizo vibe. It doesn't get more mistakes than these six-man tag team matches with uh, multiple pins, like best two out of threes, three out of sevens. Uh, I was noticing a lot of that. It's not just one pinfall and it's over. Submission maneuvers, that's another difference. They don't tap out. Basically, they last just submission maneuver, they do this colorful thing where as soon as they got the lock on, they just start doing this start tugging it and you start like making a call like you know, I surrender or the best way to describe it is you know when Jericho like put someone on a submission maneuver in WCW or around 08 through 2010 and he started saying ask him to the referee instead of making you tab out you just have to like make a proclamation do you submit or not yes or no and that's kind of how it works. So, that's interesting. Yet, I'm not going to lose sleep if I don't see it or not. It's glad I got that for the learning experience. Mr. Wonka 7 and suck my dick. <laughs>